Hey, everybody. Fascinating topic here on Friday, diving into the world of IoT security and connecting those billions of devices in a safe, secure way with a true expert in the field at Kudelski. Hardy, how are you? Great. How are you? Thanks for having me on today. Well, thanks for being here. Really intriguing topic. Uh, for those who don't uh, aren't in the industry, perhaps don't know of Kudelski, maybe introduce uh, yourself and the mission of your team. Yeah, great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Hardy Schmubauer. I'm Senior Vice President of Kudelski IoT. And just to give a, a brief background on, on Kudelski, uh, I joke it's the, the biggest company that nobody's ever heard of, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's a billion dollar company that has a, a long history uh, in security. Um, our digital TV business unit secures most of the digital television or, or major uh, digital television um, providers today. So DISH is one of our, our largest customers uh, mm -hmm. here in the U.S. Uh, we also have a cybersecurity division. Um, and then we have Ski Data or Secure Ac Access Division, which provides uh, secure access into ski resorts, stadiums, um, and uh, a lot of ven the major venues here in the U.S. and worldwide uh, and airport parking as well. Airport parking. Wow, you guys are in a lot of interesting segments. So I'm not even sure where to start with this topic. When you think about IoT security, uh, where do you start? Uh, like from a foundational level, how do you define the problem these days? Sure. I mean, I think security really starts with, you know, at a very basic level of, of giving devices a, a unique ID, a certificate, which is then used as uh, the basis for secure operations, for secure boot, for firmware signing. So that's re really where a device has to start is, is getting that unique or, or secure identity. Uh, we call the, the process of assigning that unique identity or, or certificate to the device, we call that provisioning. And if you're going to do that, you know, while the device is already deployed out into the field, we call that infield uh, provisioning. So if you don't kind of start with that process in your in your device design and your device deployment, it's really tough to have security um, of the device over its uh, security lifecycle and the, and the deployment of the device in the field. Yeah, we'll talk about uh, a challenge. I mean, I think it seems to me security is often an afterthought when it comes to these connected devices, or at least has been. So how are how are you hoping to change that? You know, what are companies up and down the value chain, what should they be doing to think differently about security and the way they deploy, manage, to build, develop, you know, devices? Yeah, I mean, I think, as you said, you know, and I think in the past, security was really an afterthought. And I think you really don't have security um, if, it wasn't, if, if it was an afterthought in your design. You really need to start uh, with security from uh, the beginning. And I think if you look you know, five years back, you know, you ask a, a group of people who are designing the same type of product, you know, what security is, you're going to get, you know, multiple different answers of, of what security is. But I think you see in the, the industry now, you're starting to see a lot of regulations, a lot of standards, which are really harmonizing uh, the language around security and also harmonizing the different requirements and regulations and, and levels of security within devices. Because I think there, there's no one size fits all for security. You know, a, a smart meter has a very different level of security than, say, a, a cat tracker. So you can't also can't have <laughs> security for everything, which is the same because it would, you know, not fit a lot of the, the use cases. So you really have to look at, at security based on your requirements, your security targets, and what the application is. Interesting. Um, so, and, and, yeah, please. But you're you're seeing a lot of regulation now, which is which is happening in the market, and that's and that's really driving uh, the the security, I would say, industry uh, forward when it comes to to IoT. So the the UK uh, just put into uh, place the PSTI Act uh, that went into effect on on April 29th, and that requires uh, a secure uh, process and and uh, security guidelines to be followed for companies to be certified uh, for them before they they launch into the market. Uh, you're seeing very similar initiatives with uh, with NIST in the U.S. and also in the EU with the Cyber Resiliency Act. So these acts and regulations are, are really harmonizing security going forward and and making IoT devices much safer uh, in the future. Yeah, fascinating. So compliance is one area. What about standards? There's a lot happening. You mentioned NIST. What's uh, what's emerging or on the radar as far as standards are concerned? Sure. I mean, I think you're seeing 
standards, you know, incorporate security, you know, into the, mm -hmm. the definition uh, of the standard. So if you look at Matter, for example, I think they've done a very good job of, of starting to incorporate security um, into the, the Matter standard. And we are mm -hmm. one of the certificate authorities uh, for Matter as well. Uh, DLMS is another metering standard where you're also seeing where they're starting to put in place inside of the standard some of these basic security things such as uh, provisioning uh, and unique identities of the device, requirements for firmware updates over the air, uh, those type of parameters are, are now becoming part of the standard as well. Fantastic progress. Now you actually start right at the foundation level, the silicon level, the embedded software, the, 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 the foundational stack to build in security. I mean, how does that work? How do you work with your partners on the semiconductor side and embedded system side to, you know, build in security? Yeah, great question. You know, because developers start, you know, with, you know, a development kit from ST or, or microchip. And, and that's really where, you know, the, the security journey needs to start, right? It's at the beginning of, of your design. So yeah, we're, we work with a lot of the major silicon manufacturers uh, to incorporate either uh, the security features into the design directly. Uh, we've done that hey. with microchip um, or into their tool chains where it's an option uh, for the developer to then use or not. And we've done that with, with ST um, and Silicon Labs um, as well. Interesting. So what does that mean for getting those devices in the field? You build in security, you still need to provision them and manage that and update them. What does that complexity look like? Sure. Well, I think, you know, once you you really start to follow the, the process and, and work with companies like Kadelsky IoT, it really becomes a, a very seamless process to really design the unique IDs, be able to provision them, to be able to provision the devices into AWS uh, or Azure mm -hmm. kind of seamlessly uh, to where those, those certificates can be used uh, for the secure operations in the application. Uh, so it's it's very, I think, a seamless process if you uh, utilize some of the tools that are available from Kadelsky IoT and the semiconductor companies uh, to give that kind of the, the device its secure foundation uh, so you can have a, a secure life cycle uh, within its uh, lifetime. But I think if you if you take a step back, you know, companies should really kind of start with, you know, a, a, a regulatory gap analysis of, OK, what are we going to need to comply with for, for this application? Um, and then they should also do a, a threat assessment and risk analysis of the of the solution to define the security targets that, that they need to achieve uh, with the device. And then, of course, you know, I think after you, you complete your design. Uh, to those requirements, you should always have a, a security assessment done uh, by a third party to make sure that the device actually does uh, meet those requirements that you defined at the beginning. Fantastic. And so where do you come in to the picture at Kudelski typically? I mean, you have, do you design products, solutions? Is it the software, the, the system lifecycle management? I mean, what, what do you guys get involved with in a typical project? Yeah, so to, to start with, you know, we have a, a team of security experts that, that really mm -hmm. helps companies do the do the gap analysis uh, for uh, on the regulatory perspective. And then to also do the TARA or the, the threat and risk assessment analysis to define the security tar targets for the device and the application. So we help define and architect, you know, what the security should be uh, for the application. Um, and then we have our, our key stream solution, which is uh, what we work with uh, a lot of the semiconductor providers to be able to give that device uh, its unique ID, uh, manage those certificates, be able to provision it uh, to where it needs to go, whether that's Azure, whether that's uh, AWS, um, and then to manage the, the lifecycle over the device to do uh, firmware updates over the air or, or secure boot. Uh, so the device can have a, a, a security life cycle. Um, and then we also have our uh, security lab in, in Switzerland, uh, which mm. so I think one of the, the best labs out there uh, for doing device assessments. So if you, you have a completed design, you want to make sure that, that that design 
um, is ready to be deployed in, in the field and be able to survive, you know, 20 years lifetime with, without getting mm. hacked or without being at risk. Uh, we have a, a team of experts that can help uh, determine if you reached your security targets by by doing uh, hacking or, or white hacking on the device to, to try to see uh, where it has limits or, or where it can potentially be compromised. Wow, that's, that's fascinating. And speaking of Europe, I understand you and the team were out at Embedded World. I, I, it looks like a fascinating event uh, in Nuremberg in Germany. What were some of the takeaways or or trends that you uh, you discovered there at Embedded World? Yeah, that was a it was a great show. It was definitely back to I would say pre pre COVID. Uh, mm. Time, so it was, it was great to to be back at uh, Embedded World. Uh, we had a couple of I think really exciting announcements at Embedded World. We uh, uh, prior to the show we announced our uh, partnership with Microchip. So we've uh, mm. been incorporated into the uh, Microchip uh, Trust Manager. Um, so our, our secure provisioning and, and keystream solution is incorporated uh, into their products there. Uh, we're also announced that you know we're we're working across the the semiconductor. Uh, with industry, uh, with many providers to be able to provide uh, these services uh, to, you know, many uh, different uh, chips that are utilized by uh, developers and designers. Because I think, you know, most designers are going to use multiple different semiconductor providers. They're not only going to use a, a microchip or they're not only going to use an ST. They probably have, you know, across their portfolio, they have multiple different uh, semiconductor providers. So I think, uh, for us to be a, a value to the developer and and the uh, embedded uh, engineers, we need to work across multiple semiconductor companies. So I think we've we've done a lot of that integration already with across multiple different uh, semi providers. Um, so it's very easy for developers to use us on say microchip and then also be able to to use us in a design later uh, for ST or Silicon Labs or for Infineon. Interesting. And so you're um, you're obviously riding the wave of IoT adoption. Are you seeing any markets getting a lot of traction these days? I mean, obviously, industrial applications are on fire, and obvious benefits. Automotive is is really exciting. What else is kind of yeah, intrigues I mean, you? I, I think, w especially when it comes to security, I mean, I think you're really seeing a a lot of uh, regulation and drive in the automotive. Uh, industry, so you're mm. seeing a lot of new regulation, which is is really raising the bar uh, within the automotive industry for security. Um, also, medical devices, I think, are mm. are following you know quickly behind that. Uh, but I think you're seeing it, you know, that's uh, kind of percolating through the the rest of the applications of, of IoT uh, as well. Um, but I think those are for sure the the kind of the two that are leading kind of the security charge within the industry. Fantastic. And you're part of Kudelski, which is a very much larger global concern, uh, headquartered out of Switzerland. What, what else do you guys work on big picture wise? Yeah, so within IoT, we are also developing um, some complete solutions as, as well. Uh, we have a, an asset tracking solution called Recover, where we utilize, mm -hmm. you know, all of our uh key stream and, and services that we've been talking about so far from a security perspective. Uh, but that's been an extremely successful uh, solution for us. Uh, we're providing uh, inventory management and, and theft recovery to auto dealers in the U.S. And then they offer it to consumers as a theft recovery solution for their wow. vehicles. Uh, and then we're also starting to offer that to uh, construction, uh, waste, and agriculture. We're we're getting a ton of traction uh, within those industries as well. Oh, exciting times. Well, it's fascinating to see this uh, evolution of IoT happening in real time. Uh, what are you looking forward to over the next weeks, months? Any uh, additional events uh, or roadmap items you care to share about? Any what, What's on your radar? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're really growing rapidly in Kadelsky IoT. Mm. So really, you know, we, we tripled the uh, revenue last year. So really wow. look forward to uh, continuing that, that growth this year. Um, attending the World Economic Forum at the uh, end of June, which is all also interesting. We're starting to look at sure. uh, the agriculture industry. And I think there's a lot of interesting evolution uh, within that industry as well, uh, which is exciting for, for IoT. 
when you're in Phoenix, which is becoming uh, the chip uh, uh, boom boom town in the U.S., perhaps in the world, with all the investment, must be an exciting time to to see all the new fabs and foundries and and uh, investment pouring in. It is, you know, I I was previously in the Bay Area and I never really thought of Phoenix as a as a tech <laughs> hub, but you know, for sure, over the over the last few years, it's it's really grown from a, from a technology standpoint. And I, I think a lot of the, the new fabs are, are really helping uh, drive that. But it's it's impressive to see, you know, how quick the construction has gone up on, on some of those plants. And it's going to be uh, exciting. And I think, you know, make Phoenix a technology hub for, for years to come. Well, exciting times. Thanks for sharing uh, the insight and amazing opportunity you have. And uh, thanks, everyone, for watching. Reach out to Kudelski. They put out some really great content on the social channels. So uh, give them a follow. Thanks, Artie. Great. Thanks a lot. Have a good afternoon. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye.